Hey everyone, Johnny here and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at how to find the sum of a GP. That is a geometric progression or as some say a geometric sequence. So I've got two examples here to show the two different variations of the formula. So in the blue box, these are the two formulas or formulae and you can see they are slightly different. The R's and the 1's are in the opposite order for these two different types of the formula, two different versions. And you use these two or you use one of these two depending on the type of geometric progression you're dealing with. So let me start with this side. So we have a pattern here, a sequence, 5, 10, 20, 40, and so on. The first question is, is this even a GP? And you would have to address this first in an exam. You can't just assume it's a geometric progression. You might not even have to apply this formula. You only apply this formula if it is in fact a geometric progression. So what is the test? What is the test for a geometric progression? The test is that the third term divided by the second term is in the same ratio as the second term divided by the first term. Okay, so let's have a look at what that is in this case. We have the third term as 20. Second term is 10, so 20 over 10 does equal 10 over 5. Well, we have to ask ourselves, does that equal the same thing? Well, 20 over 10 is 2. 10 over 5 simplifies to 2 as well. So both of these equal 2. So yes, we have a GP, or to write this in a slightly better way, we could just write 2 over 1 equals 2 over 1. And because the left side here equals the right side, we know that the terms are in the same ratios. So therefore, we have a GP. Okay, so that's how you prove the GP. And what does that actually mean? It means that to get from one term to the next, to get from 5 to 10, from 10 to 20, we are multiplying by the same number each time. We are multiplying by 2. It's whatever number came out as that common ratio, 20 over 10, 10 over 5. It was 2 each time. So the 2 is actually the common ratio. It's the R because we're times in by 2 to get from one term to the next. Okay, and you can see that would just keep going. So it's in that pattern. That's why it's a geometric progression. It's geometric because there is that multiplier. Now, we should write down here, once we establish that it's a GP, you always want to state what the first term is. That is A. We call A the first term. Think about it as the first letter of the alphabet. So it's the first term. In this case, A is 5. So always look at the leftmost number. So A equals 5 and R, of course, which is the common ratio, is 2, as we've just proven. Because that is the number that you have to multiply a term on the left by to get to the term to its right. Okay, so now that we've established that it is a GP, we've tested that it's a GP, it's a geometric progression, the question is, which formula do we apply? Because there are two possible formulas that you could use to find the sum of a GP and you've got to use the right one. Now, you use this formula on the left in a situation where the common ratio, see here the ratio is 2, it's where the common ratio is either greater than 1 or, or less than negative 1. So where the common ratio is, for instance, 2, where it is 3, where it is 100, where it is 1,000, or where the common ratio is negative 2, negative 3, negative 1,000, you will use this formula, this formula here on the left, okay? It's a different formula where the common ratio sits between negative 1 and 1, okay? So if you want to think about it on a on a number line, right? So imagine you had zero here. This is a number line. Imagine you had one here, negative one, then you have two, then over here you have negative two, and so on. It keeps going out, right? We use this formula here on the left when the common ratio is either 
greater than 1 or less than negative 1. But the crucial thing is here, you don't use it when it sits in between negative 1 and 1. Okay, so if it's negative a half, if it's a half, you do not use this formula. Okay, you use this formula where the 1 and the R to the N and the 1 and the R switch places. Okay, so it's worth memorizing both of these formulas, by the way. You just should write them out 5 to 10 times without looking. Make sure you memorize them. Uh, let's follow the formula. So remember, A represents the first term in the series, in the progression, which is 5. And R represents the common ratio, which is the number that is being multiplied by each term to get to the next one. Okay, so we know that that was 2. N represents the number of terms in the sequence that you want to add together. Okay, so here we have four terms, but it keeps going. So we could actually find the sum of the first 50 terms or the first 100 terms by using this formula. We just have to specify where the N is, how many terms we're adding together in this geometric progression, okay? So the important thing is you'll get a question. They won't always have commas here. We're actually adding. I've just put them in commas to show the pattern of numbers, but we're interested in if you had this pattern of numbers and you added them all together or you added a certain amount together, how do you get to the result? What's the end result of adding a certain amount of numbers together in this kind of sequence or pattern? Okay, so let's apply the formula. So let's have a look up here. It says SN. Let's do it for the first four terms, okay? So I want to find the first four terms. So the sum of the first four terms in the pattern 5, 10, 20, 40 is given by A, which is 5, followed by R to the N, which is 2 to the 4, again, because we only have four terms that we want to add together. So you can see up here, 5 plus 10 plus 20 plus 40. If you, if you do that in your head, you'll know that that adds to 75. So our formula should give us 75 as the answer. So the sum of the first four terms equals 5 bracket 2 to the 4, minus 1 over R minus 1. So you don't put the power in this time. You just do 2 minus 1. Okay, what does that give us here? You should just keep going down a line every time you do the working, but I'll just do it to the right for space. Okay, so we have 5 times. Now, what's 2 to the 4? 2 to the 4 is 16. Take away 1 is 15. So we have 5 bracket 15. That just means 5 times 15, by the way. Invisible times between the number and the bracket. Over 2 minus 1, which is 1. So 5 times 15 over 1 is 75. We don't need to write the over 1 because everything has an invisible over 1 in it. Okay, so our answer here is 75. And we knew that that should have been the answer because we can just look at these four terms and add them together in our heads and get 75. You might then ask, well, why would we bother with this if you can just do it in your head? Well, what if I asked you to find the sum of the first 10 terms? I can save you the trouble of continuing the pattern. So you would have to write six more terms here, 40, 80, 160, and then add that together in your head. Or I could ask you to do the first 1,000 terms. Do you really want to go to the trouble of writing out 1,000 numbers and adding them together in your head? You could just go to this formula and do S1000. And instead of putting 2 to the 4 here, you would just put 2 to the 1,000. And by the time you put that in your calculator, it will tell you what the sum, right? What the sum of the first 1,000 terms will be. Okay, so 75 was our answer there. Let's have a look at the other possible formula that you might use to find the sum of a GP. Remember, so I've got them listed with commas, but we are talking about when you want to add them together. So making sure that we test, first of all, that 40, 20, 10, 5 is a GP. Remember, this is in the opposite order now, so don't assume that it's the same. We want to test it. We need to do the third term here over the second term, then the second term over the first term. So what's our third term? 10 over 20. You can see that was the third term, that's the second term. We need to see that it equals the second term, which is 10, over the first term, oh, sorry, which is 20, uh, over the first term, which is 40. And if we simplify 10 over 20, you're going to get a half. 
and 20 over 40 is similarly a half. Therefore, they are in the same ratio. The reason that this is slightly different and what you want to be aware of here is that a half sits between negative 1 and 1. Remember, if a fraction or if a ratio that you find, and remember, this is the common ratio, right? This is a GP with a common ratio of a half because if I multiply 40 by a half, I get to 20. If I multiply 20 by a half, I get to 10. So it's a common pattern. That's the number that each one multiplies by. You can see that once I multiply 5 by a half, I get to 2 and a half. Okay, so it's going to end up looking very different to this side here, even though these numbers look the same at the moment, just in opposite order. Okay, so I have that common ratio. I know my first term in this case is 40. The first term is not 5 like in the other case, because look, the leftmost term is 40. And this is important because the ratio, a half, sits in between negative 1 and 1. So where the ratio, where the ratio is between, and see how I put R in the middle of these two inequality signs, is between negative 1 and 1. Where it is between that, so where R is less than 1 or greater than negative 1, right? Right? So it could be negative a half, negative a quarter, or it could be positive a quarter, positive a half, but it can't be two, right? Where, it's, where it satisfies this condition, that's the condition to use it. You use this formula here where the one and the R's are in the opposite order. And the reason is because the R is now smaller, right? We don't want the sum, like think about the sum of all of these. We don't want it ending up negative simply because we did r minus 1. So imagine that r was a half, or which it is a half here. A half minus 1, if I switch the order, a half minus 1 would be negative a half, whereas 1 minus a half is a half. So it's a positive still. So we've switched it to basically preserve the positive value of the sum. Okay. You can still technically end up with, I believe, a negative if we had negatives being added together. So if you had negative 40, negative 20, negative 10, and you added all of those up, the answer would in fact be negative, but that would you would still have a positive come out of this fraction, but because the first term is negative, so negative 40, the sum will still come out as negative. Don't worry if that doesn't make complete sense right now, let's just follow this example. So. I know my conditions, I've got R equals a half, A equals 40, always write that. How do I find the sum of the first four terms? Well, again, we know the sum of these first four terms should be 75. Okay, so S4 equals A. How do I, I've got to do A first. The first term was 40, bracket, one minus a half. And I do, I'll do these in brackets. Notice where the R is, I'm doing it in brackets because I don't want to get any other brackets confused with this number. So 1 minus a half to the power of 4 bigger bracket. So you see how the half here is the R and because I have another bracket outside, I've been very careful here to put this small fraction in a bracket, okay, just to make things clearer. So always a good idea to do that and to do that in your calculator as well. Use extra brackets, especially when using fractions within another fraction. Okay, so then on the denominator, we have 1 minus, again, bracket, a half. Because look, we've got this big fraction here. And then on either side of the fraction, the top and the bottom, we have smaller fractions. So that's why I'm using these smaller brackets. Okay, so we have 1 over 2. Once we simplify that, we end up with 40 bracket. And then we'll have 1 minus a half to the 4, which is going to equal, you can put that in your calculator, right? 1, one half to the power of 4 is going to end up being 1 over 16, and 1 minus 1 over 16 will be 15 over 16. And then we'll have that divided by 1 minus a half, which is a half. Okay, so we'll have this. And then once you put that in your calculator, you will find that 40 times 15 over 16 over a half will give 75. You can just calculate that. To do it manually, I would just multiply both of the smaller fractions on the top and the bottom of this bigger fraction. I would multiply them by 16 because that's the lowest common 
multiple, right? Uh, so we go like this. Or rather, it's the uh, lowest common denominator. Ap apologies, lowest common denominator. So one half that, we simplify the 16 there, we make that eight. Again, you can just calculate this. Don't worry if you don't understand this exact part. But what I'm doing is I'm multiplying the big top and the big bottom by the lowest common denominator out of the two smaller fractions here. So out of 16 and 2, 16 is the smallest common denominator or common multiple, I suppose. And we have 8 here. 40 times 15 over 8 will end up being 75. Okay, so we end up with the same sum. If you were to add any further terms, so say we added another six terms, so we found the sum of the first 10 terms, the answer would be very different to if we found the sum of the first 10 terms here because you can see the fifth term is going to go up to 80 and then 160, whereas this one's going to go five, two and a half, and then that will be halved again. So they look the same now, but I'm trying to illustrate the point that we can have the same set of numbers in a reverse order and you still have to use different formulas because the ratios satisfy these different conditions. Here, the ratio was between negative one and one. Here, it was greater than one. And we would also accept less than negative one as well to use this formula. So they're the two types of formulas that you might have to use to find the sum of a GP. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.